law of our life. Ye are my friends. If ye do the things that I command you, surely our Lord asks nothing less than that we heartily and truthfully say, Yea, Lord, what thou dost command that we will do. Amen. These commands are to be done as a proof of our friendship. The power to do them rests entirely in the personal relationship we be with Jesus Christ as on our daily life. Amen. The highest proof of true friendship and one great source of his blessedness is the intimacy that holds nothing back and admits the friend to share our innermost secrets. It is a better thing to be Christ's servant. His redeemed ones delight to call themselves his slaves. Christ had often spoken of the disciple as his servant. In his great love, our Lord now says, No longer do I call you servants. With the coming of the Holy Spirit, a new era was to be inaugurated. The servant doeth not what the Lord doeth. He has to obey without being consulted or admitted to the secret of all the master's place. But I have called you my friends. For all things I have from my Father, I have made known unto you. Christ's friends share with him in all the secrets the Father had entrusted to him. Amen. Let us think what this means. When Christ spoke of keeping his Father's commandment, he did not mean merely what we are written in the Holy Bible or in the Holy Scriptures but special commandments which were communicated to him day by day from hour to hour. Oh, yeah. It was of this he said, the father loved the son and showed him all things that he do it, and he will show him greater things. All that Christ did was doing God's work. God showed it to Christ. So that he carried the Father's will and purpose, not as man often does, blindly and unintelligently, but with full understanding and approval. As one who stood in God's counsel, he knew God's plan. And this now is the blessedness of being Christ's friends, that we do not as servants do his will without much spiritual insight into his meaning and aim but are admitted as an inner circle into some knowledge of God's more secret thoughts. From the day of Pentecost on, by the Holy Spirit, Christ was to lead his disciples into the spiritual apprehension of the mysteries of the kingdom, of which he had been at all spoken only by parables. Friendship delights in fellowship. Friendship of counsel. Our friends dare trust to each other what they will not for anything have others know. They share their secrets. What is it that gives a Christian access to this holy intimacy with Jesus Christ? That gives him the spiritual capacity for receiving the communication Christ has to make of what the true Father has shown him. Yeah, my friends, if you do what I command you, it is loving obedience that purifies the soul, that refers not only to the commandments of the world, but to that blessed application of the word to our daily life, yeah. which none but our Lord himself can give. But as these are waited for independence and humility, and faithfully obey, the soul becomes a continual experience. Hallelujah. I have called you friends. For all things I have heard from my Father, I have made known unto you. Yeah. I will call you friends. Ah, what an unspeakable honor. What a revealing privilege. Oh, Savior. Speak the word with power into our hearts, into our soul. I've called you my friend, whom I love, whom I trust, 
to whom I have made known all that passes between my father and me. Having been told now the great length that the Lord has gone to build this intimate relationship with us at a time we were not worthy of this unconditional love from Jesus, we are and uh, how do we stand with Jesus to be regarded as being born again of the Spirit? To justify his love for us, which no money can buy. I will now subscribe to the belief that your relationship with Jesus Christ is a personal experience. Otherwise, that we have no need for teachers and prophets and 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 and, and, <coughs> and pastors too. Our Lord had this to say about all those four teachers all over our churches today. Making every effort to modify the teachings of Christ and rewrite the Holy Scripture to suit the thinking of modern corrupt world or their limited understanding of the teachings of Jesus Christ. In Luke 6, 39, a blind man cannot lead a blind man, can he? We did not both fall into a pit. The pupil is not above his teacher. But everyone, after he has been fully trained, will be like his teacher. How then can we stand with Jesus? And how then can we be born again? There are five basic principles which can lead us on the right path to improving our relationship with Jesus Christ. If we are to be born again, and these are one, a public confession that Jesus is Lord and Savior. Accepting that Jesus Christ is Lord and truly believing that God raised him from the dead and for live as one who has been baptized with the Holy Spirit. And five, we must believe that Jesus Christ and proclaim to serve him completely without doubting so that the Lord will not also tell us because you have seen me, you have believed. Thomas, there are those who have not seen it and yet have believed. We must daily meditate on the following facts. One, Jesus is physically alive. His body is resurrected. He's no longer dead. He is alive today guiding his disciples and us, just as he has always done. He appeared to them and asked them to give him food. And he ate, proving to them that only he is alive. Since ghosts cannot eat at the food, have ever seen ghosts eating before? So he is also here, present with us, if we allow him space in our hearts and in our midst. The gift of the Holy Spirit can never manifest in our midst in as long as we cannot be in one accord. Oh, yeah. As disciples we are, as we read in Acts of Apostle 2, 1 to 4. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and a filled all the house where they were sitting and there appeared unto them clothing tongues like of fire and they sat each on, on of them and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance in one account. Two, to Apostle Thomas, Jesus is Lord, but not after he has seen the sign, he said, my Lord and see you. We don't use that word very much today, but it might be translated as my boss or my king or my master. Jesus is the one who tells us what to do and when to do it. Sort of like an army. The sergeant major tells you where to go, what to wear, when to do everything. Jesus is the master sergeant of all our lives, living in us by his spirit. He wants to direct our lives like that sergeant. Jesus' goal isn't just to teach us what to do, but how to do it. Everything needs to be done by His Spirit. God created human beings to live by the Spirit. He calls this life. 
When we were living without his spirit, he called us dead. 